Hi there, good morning. I just wanted to show you that cluster of tomatoes I have right there. I'm going to harvest those, um, possibly give it to the chickens. They love it. Um, so if you haven't noticed, I don't usually grow as many tomatoes as other gardeners. Um, one year I had a huge, huge cluster of tomatoes that I bind up and it just provided tons of those little cherry tomatoes that you saw there. But the problem was that uh, I started seeing a lot of tomato hornworms. And if you haven't seen them before in real life, and suddenly you see them, then it's like uh, the horror. <laughs> the horror because they're giant worms, like the size of your thumb. So... Um, I kind of clipped off the branches that they were on and one year I saw that it had decimated my entire tomato plant so uh, it kind of turns me off to it but you know there are ways around it um, you can intermix you can um, interplant your different crops with other crops, um, with other plants that repel pests. So, for instance, you can grow radish to repel cabbage maggots and cucumber beetles. So you can grow radish next to cabbages and cucumbers. And so this, the topic for today is how to uh, interplant herbs and flowers to repel different pests and let me go down um, and tell you about how I grow basil because basil repels flies, mosquitoes, carrot flies, white flies and I also grow borage uh, so here I have I have uh, Brussels sprouts so the growing radish near here would be great um, so, so, I also grow borage, let me show you. So, the other borage got mowed over by the wildlife, uh, stalks. But here are some baby ones that are sprouting from where I grew them last year. Um, I grew a whole row of these. And, um, they will come up, they're really tiny right now, but they reseeded themselves, um, just that the seeds fell, um, and it just grew again. I didn't really water this area either, but the last rains probably brought them up. So borage repels tomato hornworms and cabbage worms. So that's where I'm going to grow my borage with my tomatoes next year, and that will hopefully repel the hornworms. You can give it a try if you like. Um, I just didn't grow any tomatoes this year. Uh, and uh, I tend to, I like the flavor of tomatoes, but I also think that, um, I don't know, I have a little bit of worry about the nightshade family of plants. Um, So chives repel carrot flies, Japanese, be Japanese beetles, and aphids. Um, I tried growing chives, but I don't know if I started plucking them out of the ground thinking that they were uh, grass weeds, <laughs> weeds, and that might be a reason for the unsuccessfulness. Um, and I tried grow them, growing them back there but it could be that they were overcrowded by the sunflowers and squash, which I didn't intend to grow. It kind of um, volunteered and grew up and over the chives. That could be it. So I, I will try that next time in a pot. And chrysanthemums, they repel a whole slew of things. That, that is a power plant to grow, and I have some in the front. I have two, two different ones. Um, an orange colored one and a purple colored one 
and they repel roaches, ants, Japanese beetles, ticks, silverfish, lice, fleas, bedbugs, and root knot nematodes. Over here, what you're seeing is my basil plant. I just I didn't come over here to show you when I was covering be, um, basil. Citronella grass, which repels insects and deter and may deter cats, and clovers repel aphids and wireworms. Coriander repels aphids, Colorado potato beetle, and spider mites. Cosmos repel the corn earworm. So if I were to grow corn, I would grow the Cosmo amongst it or around it. Um, so that's good to know. Last year I grew about mm, 15 stalks of corn and of those um, I got maybe eight corn and the reason being I didn't know how to grow it and you can learn from my mistakes but I grew them in separate little batches. I tried to grow them around the children's garden so it pr would provide shade, it would get tall and apparently you have to grow them, the corn, close together in a larger amount so they can pollinate each other. Um, and let me find my dahlia. So dahlias repel nematodes and dill repels aphids, squash bugs, spider mites, and cabbage loopers. And let me get to my fennel. So I covered fennel before that I grow them and they look like the star anise, the umbel shape. It repels aphids, slugs, and snails. So this year I've been having a huge slug and snail problem. And um, I didn't know what to do. And I saw on this other um, program that they, the man didn't know what to do either and he would squeeze them and all kinds of things but what he found easiest and and I know it sounds hor horrific but when you need to desperately get rid of the slugs and snails that are eating all your crops you would do anything and he would use his scissors to go around and cut the slugs and snails in half. Um, let's see, um, French marigold. French marigold I just got last year, I mean, um, I'm sorry, not last year, just recently in my Lowe's haul in, on clearance, and it repels white flies and kills nematodes, so I can't wait till that grows a lot bigger, um, and garlic repels root maggots and Mexican bean beetles and peach tree borers. So that's good to know. Next time I'm going to grow garlic around any type of stone fruit. So I don't know if that would help because the garlic's going to be close to the ground and the peach tree is way up high. Um, let's see. I guess I can make the pest pest spray um, that has like uh, hot chili pepper and garlic in it that you can uh, spray onto your your fruit trees. Garlic actually repels a lot of um, animals, uh, uh, um, insects more than what it states here I think because a lot of them tend to dislike the smell and it uh, is definitely an antibacterial, has antibacterial and antifungal properties. So, uh, what I normally do is I heat up some water um, and I chop up garlic and hot hot chili peppers, and I just put those in the water and I let it sit for a day, 24 hours. And then I um, filter out the solid pieces of garlic and chili peppers and pour the solution into a spray bottle. And sometimes you can add a little bit of uh, dish soap and then mix, just uh, shake the bottle and spray all over your plants so that they don't come around 
and eat up all your fruits and things like that. Um, so let me talk about lavender. Lavender repels moths, scorpions, flies, fleas, and mosquitoes. So that's good to know because I have lavender up in the front and I have heard a lot of good things about lavender, which I will start growing some back here in my backyard. And leeks repel carrot flies. Lemongrass repels mosquitoes, which I have some lemongrass. I just potted this, um, I just had this lemongrass in a pot and I just transferred it into the ground recently and it looks really nice. I have two bushes in the front and then I have about uh, five plants dispersed all about. Um, I started growing them at the base of fruit trees. So that's a nice trick. Oops. Yes, that's, that's where I, I have several all over the backyard. And I actually use it. It's really fragrant. Um, so on to, and here is another basil. This is a sweet basil I got on clearance and I put it in the ground. And here is the French marigold right there with a new bloom. And I know that's a new one because I cut off all the dead heads. So back there is some mint that I have growing in a pot and lemongrass next to it, really nice and tall, and some more mint. I have it dispersed everywhere. Um, and peppermint repels aphids, cabbage bloopers, flea beetles, squash bugs, white flies, and something called the small white. So I'm not sure what that is, but the more plants something, the more insects that a plant can um, keep out of your garden, the better. And I just recently got some cuttings from my sister of rosemary, and that repels cabbage, looper, carrot flies, roaches, mosquitoes, slugs, snails, and the Mexican bean beetle. So that one's actually another hardworking herb aside aside from the chrysanthemum, the flower. Um, and some versions of chrysanthemum are edible. So um, Chinese make chrysanthemum tea and it has a sweet, fragrant, um, a sweet taste and a fragrant aroma as you enjoy your tea. So, and I grow green onions, which is in the Allium family, and I know that definitely deters uh, bugs. And um, what a surprise for me that I have my Moringa survived the cold, and here it is coming back up. Um, so I'm really excited about that tucked away, it must have been protected, because in the pots I did um, put leaves at the base of it to, to insulate it. So as you can see, I grow um, more flowers and more herbs now under the fruit trees, and I do that for a reason, of, for all these reasons, it's called interplanting. And here's another basil. I'm, it is so fragrant. When I brush up against it, it smells so good. And this is edible. This is Thai basil. It smells so good. I wish you could smell it. And let's see. Here's another dahlia. And some more of that basil. And I nestled it right against my uh, blackberries. And here are some bay leaves. And let's see, I'm just showing you how I'm planting things. And a lot of this has to do with, I love, 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 love basil. So I just recently took a bunch of cuttings and just spread them all over. And so that was a cutting and it was thriving. 
Here's my rosemary I got for my sister. It might be too late in the season to, to like, um, grow it from cutting because it's so hot. So that last one didn't look too good. These are the new, the new rosemary that I got from her just a week and a half ago. So we'll see how that does. Here's a new, this one isn't actually new, it was in a pot and it's basil and I just put it into the ground and it is thriving. And I grew that really close to my Swiss chard, hoping to, you know, get rid of critters. And here's a basil. I just did that at the right time because they are all coming up real nice. Here's Cosmo. And I might be putting that into, growing that in the ground instead of in the pot. And let's see. Next to my lime tree, like I said, I grew a lot of, um, I started growing a lot of things at the base of my fruit trees. And that is the lemongrass. And right over there was another lemongrass. And all I did was throw two shoots down there. That was it. And now look at how bushy and nice it's forming and it's all about controlling what's growing if you don't like a plant somewhere remove it like I did with the sunchokes um, I removed a few because they were blocking the sunlight to my other plants um, and I can give them away so other people can have a, a little bit of it as well and next to this little uh, kumquat treeling it's about two feet tall. I am trying to grow holy basil and I kind of spread it all over here but for some reason that little tiny patch is what's left and I hope that it grows but I don't know. I try to leave it alone. The more I fuss with it I find the more of a chance it will die. And um, oh yes Here's a marigold from, that I took the seed from last year and I put it down here. Um, a lot of the seeds didn't make it and I don't know if it's because of this um, soil that I have. Uh, but so here's a neat, a neat trick that I just learned and I just discovered it and I'd like to share it with you. It's a nice tip. Um, so one is to grow these um, herbs and stuff next to your fruit trees at the base of your fruit tree. So here's some more lemongrass. As you can tell it was just two separate shoots and now it's forming its you know it's growing underneath and spreading and it's it doesn't spread like terribly it kind of stays in that same clump so it's really nice. So don't worry about growing lemongrass ever. If it, anything that keeps mosquitoes away is great. So over here, I just recently threw in some seeds, marigold seeds, all around here, and I hope they spring up. Um, after this video, I'm going to water this area, um, but I don't know if it will grow because I kind of moved all this mulch over, and I kind of left a layer of mostly soil over there hoping that the marigold seeds will come up so what happened was last what was it two three weeks ago I, I did a Lowe's haul and I bought two clearance marigolds and they kind of looked a little bit dry and the flowers were dead so I cut off the flowers just to toss out and then I planted the marigolds in the ground well, then I realized um, I picked the f picked up the flower and I opened it up and I realized the seeds are all there like a bunch. So I realized, you know what, I could take those deadheads and replant the seeds from them and make even more plants. So for a dollar for that plant, the marigold, I can get so many seeds from it. And, and so even if the seeds from the deadheads don't survive I still will get flowers and seeds from from it when it grows and then I'll have many many more marigolds for next year 
So that's a tip for you that I just discovered. And even from the $1 clearance plant, I already got seeds from it. So um, in the future, you can buy herbs and flowering plants and propagate it by seed in that way. So um, thank you for watching. I'm going to go ahead and water the yard now.